Welcome to the Michigan Skier Show. Join us each time as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great sport. Well, hello everyone, Gary Morgan, Great Lakes Sport Publications. Michigan Skier, Michigan Runner, anyway. Well, my last day here at Camp Jay. I'm here at the battle ceremony. And uh, I'd like to thank my sponsor, Matoski Area. We're at the Arctic Edge in Canton, Michigan, and with us is Gary Morgan, who has just returned from the Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, Korea, and you saw, what, 10 of 15 different sports. Wow. Uh, it was quite an exciting time there. Uh, logistics getting around. It was a semi-nightmare. Uh, there was thousands of buses. And I had to hustle to, to get around to see them. But uh, once you were at any of the venues, they were spectacular. They were well done, um, great venues. Um, and like I said, then it was world-class competition in every sport. Well, so you've been to the Winter Olympics in uh, Salt Lake City, Torino, Vancouver, Sochi, and now Pyeongchang. How did this one stand out? Well, this one had its issues beyond a doubt, uh, you know, and it'll forever be remembered as the uh, logistics nightmare of getting around. You, there was no, the other than a train system running, you know, across the whole country, then it was buses galore getting around, and uh, it was, like I said, a nightmare to be catching buses and where they put people, and uh, Many people missed some events and media people and everything was all over the place. Well, so you actually got around to almost every single venue. Tell us a little bit about um, how you went about that and what the venues were like. Well, to get to them, I had to take a, uh, we were, I was a volunteer, so they were putting us up in a, 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 a city called Wanju, which is a little closer to the center of the country. And uh, I was staying at a university called Halle University. Uh, I, I did my training at uh, Yonsei University. Uh, that was a world-class uh, institution. Halle is a basically a automotive um, university, but uh, it was miles from anywhere. So we that was the one they were talking about being the coastal cluster. Yes, where they had uh, there uh, they had. Um, uh, they had the ice skating rink, which was for figure skating and um, uh, short track. So, and I saw figure skating, and I saw some of the Michigan skaters here who uh, train right here. Uh, Arctic, Arctic Edge uh, Ice uh, Arena here in Ken. And so anyway, um, then I saw the short track there a couple of nights. And then uh, right in that, right next to it, there was the Oval, which is a 400 meter uh, ice skating rink. I saw a couple of events there. Uh, and they do anywhere from 500 to uh, uh, 10,000 meters in there. Speed skating. Yeah, speed skating. And uh, it's amazing watching those events, and I've been going to them now here for five Olympics. The, uh, the Dutch are, that is their thing. In fact, I talked to one of their journalists, and he said they had 24 athletes. 20 of them were skaters, and four did some other events. <laughs> so skating, be doing short track and long track. And the Koreans are very good at, once again, short track and the oval skating. So, uh, you know, that was uh, definitely two events that there was a lot of Dutch and a lot of Koreans who picked up quite a few medals. Then uh, just uh, in that same area, there was the ice uh, uh, hockey rink where all the big games were played. And I saw the uh, USA versus Russia meet. And, of course, the U.S. lost 4 nothing. But the Russians uh, brought a cheerleading squad. And uh, they were they were right to watch, but there was a lot of Americans, and it was a very heated game, and even the, between the fans, so the fans gave a gave a better show than even on the ice. So it's pretty good. <laughs> they also in these huge venues, they have sponsor uh, buildings where they show their product. There was Kia, there was um, there was uh, North Face, which supplied us with our uh, equipment, and any Olympic officials, they all had North Face equipment. Uh, there was Coca-Cola had a, there was Alibaba, which is a huge um, uh, e-commerce e uh, company that started in 99 out of China. They had a huge exhibit there. Um, I'm trying to think, oh, uh, KT, which is Korean Telecom. So they had that, and they, they had some sculptures. 
then from there they have the superstore which is uh, just this huge building with the souvenirs and people would stand an hour in line to buy stuff and then way right down the other end they had the curling center and a, a live stage where they'd be doing and then the curling center which uh, was very hard to get a ticket and the u.s won a gold medal but the korean women did very well also and so they had was, a nickname didn't they they did but i did not know what it was but it became a very popular venue and i was never able to get a ticket there so you're talking four rinks just for skaters but yes yeah, so and they got four different rinks there for well they're all different events so definitely have to have different ice and different configuration the whole deal and uh, so from there but then i ended up uh, the other venues i went to was uh, the downhill well the alpine events so long alpine events and they were con at jorgensen ski center which was about 30 at least 30 minutes 30 to 40 minutes from the jinbu train station you got there had to catch a bus 30 to 40 minutes they built this brand new ski resort huge hotel and up on top of a mountain beautiful resort but like i said it was out in the middle of no man's land it was like 30 to 40 minute bus ride and a beautiful spot you like you felt like you're in the national park but that was great and that's the day i got to see lindsey vaughn uh, bring home her uh, bronze medal a great way for her to finish off her olympic career lots of americans there so it was it was an exciting day it was kind of the highlight of the olympics for me to see her win that medal when you're watching downhill, where are you? You're down at the bottom, and so what they do, uh, you really can't see them until they come over the final, the final jump or the final hill. But they start up three quarters of a mile up on top of the. It's a, usually about a 1,200 meters uh, course, so it's about three quarters of a mile, give or take. And uh, you, you, what they got is cameras along the way. So it's all cameras. You're so you can see it on a jumbotron. Yeah, you got a big, huge jumbotron. Time going by, the whole deal like that. So it's definitely all that. You're just getting needing to see them come down the last couple jumps, the last couple of hills, and then come down, and you get to see them finish. Then the other, I went to the uh, snowboard cross, and um, that's where each individual, got, um, this was men, came down, they got a time, then they started racing six at a time down a hill, down the mountain, this is over at Phoenix Snow Park, which is only about a 10 minute ride on a, on a bus and from the train station. And um, so that was not a bad deal, but, and it was a beautiful day out there. And like I said, it was great to see uh, Nick Baumgartner from Ironwood, Michigan, get fourth place. I just missed the medal, but still fourth place in the world on that given day is pretty cool. And he was the oldest person in the field at 36 years old. A uh, great guy, I've met him a few times, so I was really happy to see him do that. The other event uh, that was outside was the um, ski jump. And I went out there at evening. They did a lot of events in the evening because uh, if you put a 12-hour time difference anywhere in the world, people are up in the morning. So any events being done at the in the evening were going to be here in the morning, and NBC would be able to have they had their uh, TV station out at Gangan, and then anything that was happening in the morning, they were able to feed it back here to the states. You know, and they didn't feed everything, but if some, so uh, like I said, I saw a lot of great events. I, I think I saw around 11 events total. I had, um, I ended up going to um, some uh, Olympic, uh, World Olympians Association uh, events, some meet and greets. We did the one at Sylvania House. So I was able to meet some of my fellow Olympians from around the world. And uh, one day we, we ended up having a Olympians for Life award ceremony and uh, they awarded three Olympians, and one was from the U.S., Tracy Evans, who is a skier, and I think it was in the 90s she skied, but anyway, and uh, she was given a Lifetime Achievement Award for starting a program for um, disadvantaged youth in Rwanda about sports and, you know, a summer camp for kids there for a one- to two-week deal, and she'd done that every year for about a decade now. So that was pretty cool to see that. That is pretty cool, and one, one of the things I'm wondering about is Looks like you see, saw some bobsleigh or a skeleton. Yes, I did. I saw a bobsleigh and skeleton, and uh, the uh, night I saw it, they were doing two-man bobsled, and uh, I believe that uh, Canada ended up winning. Oh, it was Canada and Germany won tied for the gold medal. Yeah, that's, that was amazing. You got 25 sleds. They went down the first time, and then they go down the second time. They both had identical times after two runs. 
And that's the, hundredths of a second. Oh God, he goes to he goes to three places, so that's pretty cool. And then they had a skeleton, which uh, you got to see them in their face first, got the mascot. And what I observed in the USA house, I went there. They had these red flyer sleds that I had when I was a kid, and we all had. And those were a precursor to skeleton and luge because if you were laying down in, on the front, it was like you uh, you were on a skeleton. They just had the two runners, and I used to do that all the time as a kid. We just get on it jump on it and go face first or if you sat on it you'd be steering it with your feet like you were doing the luge so that the the, the red flyer sled is a precursor to the luge and the skeleton hard to believe but really you know i think about it that and i did all that type of stuff when i was a kid well that's pretty interesting too and i'm wondering from where you're watching those events well those events the luge <coughs> And the, uh, um, well, they have the luge skeleton and bobsleigh at the sliding center. So they, and they once again, it's about a three quarters of a mile. It goes up 1,200 meters up the mountain. Now we got to watch and some certain curves and the finish area a little bit. You couldn't quite think there, but you could see them where they kind of finished. And then they get the last few curves. They didn't let you go up to them to start. When I did it in Sochi, I was able to walk all the way up to the, st up to the top and see the start. But they didn't let you do the, that this time. What's it like seeing them go by so fast? Well, the skeleton is such a small sled, it'd be like the luge. It goes by, you, it's hard to ever see it. So I, I got some pictures of that towards the finish. Now the bobsled is a bigger sled. You're able to see it you, and you hear it coming. So you can be prepared to see it come by. And especially when it goes by on the big curve and it goes by like it had Pan Wan Jang on the big curve, then it go right over that. So I got a few pictures of that. So that was kind of cool. But uh, you know, overall, it was a great experience, but I saw some phenomenal things. And, you know, the Olympics, you know, on the front end, it's still about the athletes. It's their once in a lifetime thing to show for one day how great they can be. After years of training, as we just talked to the manager, about how many years of training the best athlete, best skaters put in here and won a medal. It is, and I know all about that as an Olympian, you train and you train and you train to have your one day in the spotlight. And that's what's why people love the Olympics, because they know it's pretty much ordinary human beings who have done extraordinary things, and they don't get a million dollar contract. They're doing it for love of the sport. It's not the NFL, not the NBA. It's the greatest sporting event for two weeks on the entire planet. I have to give the Koreans a great uh, credit because they did do a great job putting it all together, and it's a monumental undertaking. It was a 10 year plan to put on a two week show. So uh, they did a great job, and I was really honored to be one of the volunteers, even though that didn't work out as well as I would have liked. It was a real honor to be a part of that, especially since I competed in Seoul, Korea 30 years ago. Well, Gary, it's hard, hard to top the um, images you just left with us. Thank you for talking with us. Well, hey, it's been great. And like you said, uh, in two years, we'll be in Tokyo. And two years after that, we'll be uh, in China. So it's going to stay in Asia for the uh, next four years, the, ne the next two Olympics. So it'll be the long plane flight out of Detroit back to uh, Tokyo and Beijing, those 14-hour uh, flights. Et chante.